embroidery is great fun. Embroidery is an art. Embroidery is simple. Embroidery is a series of simple operations which can be carried to any degree of complexity. Embroidery is education. Even at the nursery stage, children can design with pegboarding. The holes are already there. Simple. Complexity, the selection of materials. There are so many on the market. Beads, braids, buttons. If you have six buttons, for instance, they can make six eyes of a complex fish. To fasten braid, you can't beat simple instant glue. Or you can do a simple, well-balanced design. Some infants start designing by paper cutting. Small squares put together make shapes. A tortoise. A flower. Or a portrait of yourself. Or someone in your family. Mum. Or better still, Dad. Or you can make a crown. King Jimmy. Queen Marilyn. King Billy. King Bert the Bewildered. King Jimmy II, and a whole royal line of kings and queens in their paper glory, a crown to match each child. At junior level, there is plenty of opportunity to discuss a project with one another. And though the classroom is used for every other lesson too, in Needlecraft it looks like a special room, with piece boxes and all the equipment about. This circus was made by a class of ten-year-olds, the idea grew out of much lively discussion after a Christmas visit to a circus. The music from Stravinsky's Petrushka inspired this work. There is the puppet show at the fair with Petrushka, the Moor and the ballerina. Parents too play their part. They made this panel in the headmaster's embroidery class. Their children were studying Mort Gartha. Much creative work stems from movement. King Arthur's sword Excalibur is being hurled, finally, into the lake. The children work together, making three-dimensional knights and steeds of baked bean tins, padding and covering wire frames. The castle at Camelot is the embroidered background to the scene. The river is made of raffine, couched down in length. Excalibur has been hurled into the lake in paint, in fabric, and wood. History, geography, and English lessons were all devoted to this theme. At the secondary stage, Children study their fabric with some discipline. These angels are darned on net. When good shops are in the district, an account can be opened, and the children have an opportunity to select their own materials. These girls were preparing to embroider from brass rubbings, so first rubbed the manhole covers in their district, and then set out to choose their background fabric. Not a great deal was required, but the manager knew all about the needs of the school. Several rubbings lent themselves to paper cut designs and were executed separately in hand and machine embroidery before being finally assembled as a hanging for the school corridor. In a small village school with only a few rooms, the head teacher has to take all the junior children for everything. These country children are keen observers of their environment, and much of their best work portrays their love and knowledge of animals. The animals come in all shapes and sizes. 
simply cut out in newspaper. A pencil is seldom required. Watch the intense concentration, the sureness of touch. Note the expert movements of the scissors. making their way up a tree trunk past a nest. This boy's embroidery shows sound technical skill as well as his familiarity with a squirrel. These baby birds are anxiously awaiting a meal in a nest made with real feathers. The same liveliness that stimulates the work of primary schools is reflected in the more disciplined work of the secondary school, where the children have developed more technical skill. seed catalogue is being consulted to stimulate ideas for designing a flower panel. In secondary schools where rooms are equipped for specialist subjects, the environment itself is an inspiration for further exciting work. The children have already had constant experience in selecting and discarding material in the primary school and are ready for the discipline of techniques. When children have these exciting embroidery experiences, their needlework is much more effective. Once they have discovered the possibilities of texture, color, and design, their interest is sustained, and they continue to bring the qualities required for creative work to all they undertake. It's interesting to see how many ways children find to design from the same subject, and what various media they choose for interpreting the design. school, experimental and advanced work is done by all ages. In colleges of education, students are encouraged to design and make their own clothes, embracing the embroidery best suited to them. All students have an intensive basic design course, which is fundamental to good craft work. Experimental weaving emulates the spider.
Classes for further education are held all over the country. Housewives escape from the kitchen and mature students prepare for a college course. They come new to this type of creative work and bring a freshness with them. Tie dyeing and fabric printing form an exciting background for embroidery. Embroidery at its best is a form of visual art as subtle and far-reaching as oil painting. Machines owned by Colleges of Art are capable of producing hand embroidery in repeat. This fabric was embroidered on the machine and is being modelled for a London couturier. These ideas were developed by diploma textile students from architectural detail. They have particular textural and design qualities, femininity and overall richness. Constance Howard surveys the ever-changing embroidery scene. To be a really good embroiderer, you have to draw extremely well, um, better than quite a lot of other people, I think, and um, you can do things which are as good as any other work which is done in any art, because it's just a different medium of expression. It's just as creative, and it takes a great deal of time to do it because there are many factors concerned with this. The use of the fabrics to begin with, the understanding of the fabric, the understanding of the techniques, you can't separate them. And also, of course, you've got to have creative ideas. It isn't just a means of putting a needle in and taking it out, and um, just doing a bit of stitchery, which is what it was once when I learned. Um, we were dictated to, we were told to do this, that and the other, we did just fill in shapes. That was all. And uh, what about men in the world of embroidery? As far as men are concerned with embroidery, um, in the past I've had a great number of ATC students, which are art teachers in training for teaching, um, doing embroidery, and the men have usually produced much more exciting work than the women. They have no preconceived ideas on the subject. Um, they use machines like traction engines, and, but they really go all out for it. Today, embroidery commissions come from every field of industry and commerce. This mural hangs in the dining room of a Worcester hotel. It is a combined work of Paula Morgan and Jenny Campbell, and its design is based on the vaulting in the nearby cathedral. Beryl Dean. We started a course for ecclesiastical embroidery here at Hammersmith College of Art and Building. This was about 13 years ago. We were doing quite small things like arms bags. Then I suddenly got the idea that we might do something really big. We joked about coats and mitres. And it suddenly occurred to me, well, perhaps collectively, we could undertake such a project, which individually we couldn't. And so I talked to Miss Orthop about it, and she was wholly in favor. And we got the building department here to make us an enormous frame. We collected together exciting fabrics. And then we thought, who should design it? And we had a past student, Susan Riley. 
And we approached her and said, would she be interested to, de to design a cope? She said she would. And you'll see that to begin with, everybody was rather timid and they worked slightly tightly. They couldn't get the freedom which Susan had in her original drawing. But as time went on, they gradually got into the idiom of the whole thing. They could see how to interpret the drawing. And you'll notice a tremendous difference between the working of Christ in Majesty, where the freedom of the drawing has been translated in terms of metal threads. And you realize that there was perhaps an interval of four or five years between the working of this and the working of that. The Embroider Guild in Wimpole Street is a thriving, lively centre of information. Its library, publications and loan collections of historic and contemporary embroidery are available to all who are interested in this ever-growing art. Embroidery is ever-changing. In the last decade, the change in the approach to teaching the subject has been tremendous. No longer are basic techniques and disciplines forced upon unwilling children. Today, a child's interest in the subject is stimulated, and only when interest and enthusiasm have been established are techniques and disciplines introduced. Embroidery is complex. Embroidery is simple. Embroidery is great fun. Embroidery is an art form, and its future lies in the hands of these children, whose individual personalities and qualities must be developed before they can begin to appreciate and understand complexities of this ever-growing 